the shop. So <laughs> the, floor, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. So uh, what I wanted to talk about uh, today is uh, Caladan, a system that we are uh, developing for uh, data center disaggregation. And uh, let me start by describing what uh, data center disaggregation is. As uh, many of you uh, probably already know, it's a relatively recent uh, uh, hardware trend in, uh, in designing data centers where the uh, target objective is to reduce costs by increasing uh, utilization and upgradability of uh, hardware by taking each of the resources that we would uh, typically have on a data center like uh, CPUs, GPUs, accelerators, uh, SSD storage or memory and putting each of these types of resources on uh, separate nodes and interconnecting them uh, through the network. And now uh, while, uh, as Babak uh, uh, talked to us about uh, memory being uh, really important, in this uh, specific talk, I'm going to focus only on uh, storage and compute devices. So uh, now that we've seen the hardware side of uh, the story, now let's look at the other end of the spectrum, which would be the trends on software uh, in data centers. So uh, again, as many of you know, we have very large uh, distributed applications that are using uh, microservices. But if we zoom into uh, these uh, microservices, we will see that these are basically uh, res uh, applications using multiple resources. So some of the components of these microservices are going to run on uh, CPUs, executing uh, some application logic. Then others are going to, like a file system, are going to be dealing with uh, access to storage. And then we can also have, for example, some components that are going to be uh, executing uh, code in GPUs for uh, accelerating certain operations. So now the question is, what happens when we put together uh, multi-resource applications and resource disaggregation? And uh, what we're going to see is uh, requests uh, that go across the data center and across uh, devices. And to explain this, I'm going to use a use case from a Flickr application, which is basically a, a post, uh, processed image uh, server. So at the uh, client, uh, uh, on the front end, we're going to have a, an image uh, cache server that is basically an in-memory cache running on a CPU that receives requests for images. Now, if the image is not on, on uh, being cached uh, currently on this uh, server, then the CPU application will send a request to read the original image from uh, an SSD storage. And then this image is going to, for example, be sent to a GPU accelerator to more efficiently uh, post-process this image. In, in this example, applying a sharpening filter. Then this sharpened image is going to be returned to the CPU stored there in the in-memory cache and uh, be served from there on future uh, requests to, uh, to the clients. And now, if we look at the system support for this type of applications, we're gonna see two main uh, limitations uh, on, on these systems. The first one is that while we are gonna have highly distributed uh, resources because of uh, data center uh, disaggregation, we are gonna see that the logic for managing the interaction between resources is centralized. So uh, in this example, uh, we would have here that the CPU uh, application is going to send a request to SSD and then receive the result and then forward this uh, image to the uh, GPU to trigger the sharpening operation, receive the result, and then serve it to the, to the client. Now, of course, ideally, we would want the SSD to send the data to the GPU and trigger the GPU function without uh, further processing from the CPU. And while this is ideal, this, we, we cannot currently do this because we cannot expect an SSD vendor to deploy uh, uh, the logic for the drivers of every possible device in the data center that this SSD could be in, interacting with. So what we're gonna see is a loss of performance due to additional uh, data transfers and service latency because we are always bouncing uh, data and operations using the CPU as a control uh, management uh, point. So to summer, uh, sorry, and the second uh, limitation is that uh, we can, to solve this problem, we can deploy uh, CPUs on, on each of the devices, uh, putting a, a CPU uh, next to the SSD and another CPU next to the uh, GPU node. And then 
be able uh, to have a distributed uh, uh, management logic for the application or, or a distributed uh, application control plane. But uh, the problem is that uh, while these CPUs can manage all the complex interaction between devices, we are basically going against the original uh, target of having data center uh, resource disaggregation, which is that we are adding additional cost into the system by deploying uh, several CPUs on each of the nodes. And also we are gonna have some challenges uh, regarding performance because uh, CPUs are gonna have a hard time uh, processing the high uh, device request rates that com are coming in uh, through the network. So, uh, so to summarize uh, these two problems together, uh, when we have multi-resource application and resource disaggregation together, we are going to see uh, problems with uh, centralized application control planes, which add uh, unnecessary data transfers and service latency. And we are also going to see higher CPU costs uh, by deploying uh, multiple CPUs that are going to be used to orchestrate uh, these disaggregated uh, resources and the interaction between these uh, multiple devices. And this is partially because CPUs cannot easily scale to high uh, device uh, request rates. So for example, we have a best practice manual from IBM that recommends uh, co-locating uh, four CPU cores on the same node for each GPU that we want to manage on, on that node. So as we can see, there's a very clear disconnect between disaggregation, where we want to have less resources in the system and drive them more efficiently, and uh, a scalable distribution where we need to add additional CPUs everywhere in order to orchestrate this communication. So the goal of uh, Caladan is precisely to solve these two problems. We want distributed uh, application control planes so that we can have a scalable orchestration of interaction between all the many resources in the, uh, in the system. And this includes both uh, uh, services uh, or applications running on CPUs and also physical devices on, on this uh, same system. And by having this scalable orchestration, we are going to be able to minimize data transfers and service latency. And at the same time, we also uh, want Caladan to offer secure communication primitives between services and devices. And importantly, we want this to be, uh, we want Caladan to be backwards uh, compatible with existing uh, drivers and devices, and we want it to, to offer a scalable and distributed uh, resource access uh, authorization. So the key enabler for Caladan is using modern uh, smart names, and that is because they have uh, sufficient hardware and programmability to efficiently offload these uh, system tasks into these uh, smart names and out of the uh, CPUs. And for example, we have a, a recent work called uh, Lynx, which precisely uses these uh, smart names to offer a remote interface to uh, operate the uh, GPUs across the network. And the way in which uh, Caladan solves these problems is by offering uh, what we call a universal resource fabric. And uh, in order to have this uh, universal resource fabric that uh, interconnects all the, uh, efficiently interconnects all the resources in the system, we, we need to solve uh, three requirements. We need to fulfill three requirements with uh, Caladan. One is uh, supporting distributed uh, application control planes. The other is offering a device agnostic transport that at the same time works with unmodified devices. And finally, we, we want to provide uh, with Caladan resource addressing, translation, and uh, of course, security. So while we could think of uh, just moving applications into these smart nicks that we are saying we are gonna use on each of the nodes, uh, if we uh, think of it, if we have multiple applications in the system, by uh, running them on the smart mix, we are soon going to run out of uh, uh, processing cycles on this uh, on the limited resources of, a, uh, of the smart mix. So what we need is Caladan to offer uh, secure, simple yet flexible primitives, system primitives that are offered and usable by all the applications in the system. And we are going to do this by deploying a distributed uh, operating system kernel inside the smart mix. So now let's see how Caladan can solve each uh, of these requirements uh, in turn. And I wanna start with uh, the distributed uh, application control plane. So here at the bottom, 
we have the uh, three uh, resources, the CPU, SSD, and GPU from the Flickr example in the beginning. And what the application is gonna do is express uh, its uh, distributed uh, processing across all these resources using uh, a graph of operations that uh, is supported by uh, Calendar. And now by making this uh, graph of operations uh, arbitrary, we can uh, express relationships between each of the operations. So for example, here we have the SSD read, and we are with Calendar, we're basically saying, whenever this read operation is done, send the uh, data we are reading into a sharpen operation that is gonna be executed in a GPU, and then the result of this uh, Post -pro uh, image post-processing operation is going to be sent back into uh, a CPU that is going to receive a, an operation that says the whole graph uh, has been uh, is done executing. And by supporting these uh, arbitrary graphs, we can basically build, for example, data flow processing uh, on top of uh, Calendar, which uh, would be, for example, uh, offered uh, through the Apache Beam uh, programming model. So now let's uh, zoom in and see how the CPU, would, uh, after it has constructed this operation graph, how it would go about executing this graph in Calendar. So we will have that the CPU code is gonna invoke the send operation on the read uh, request uh, of the graph, and then wait for the done operation to be done. Now this is gonna be sent to uh, Caladan, which is gonna go and trigger the read operation, then this read operation is gonna be sent to the uh, physical device, the, the SSD. And once the uh, Caladan uh, sees that the SSD request for the physical device is uh, done, it's gonna uh, go and fetch the next operation in the graph until the entire graph uh, has finished uh, execution. But now, remember that we said that we want uh, Caladan to offer a fabric that is device agnostic, uh, with a device agnostic transport and that is able to run with unmodified devices. And of course, as, as I said uh, before, both the SSD and the GPU do not know how to uh, operate with Caladan messages uh, across the network. So uh, as I said, we are gonna deploy uh, a trusted uh, kernel on each of the SmartNICs. And each uh, of these uh, SmartNICs is going to uh, execute uh, the Caladan kernel with a very simple device adapter logic that is going to translate these Caladan specific messages into the specific uh, requests that are offered by the device vendor. And then detect when the request is done and translate that uh, back into triggering the next operation in the graph. And uh, if you look uh, closely here on the left, you will see that the CPU does not need any uh, adapter logic because in fact the CPU is fully programmable and it, uh, we can just implement it there as part of the uh, uh, application code. And finally, each of these uh, uh, requests that we have here on the graph is offered as uh, request uh, objects that are offered by the Caladan kernel. So each of these uh, requests basically points to the target physical device where we wanna send these requests to, and then it can contain some uh, immediate data and also references to all other uh, objects uh, in the system. So for example, in this case, the, the read request is gonna have a reference to the sharpened request so that Caladan knows what to trigger once the read operation has finished. And now, of course, if you remember the, the, the example uh, for this application, we said that we want to read an image from the SSD and into the GPU. So what the uh, Caladan offers is also memory uh, objects that the application is going to use to allocate uh, some uh, memory object on a RAM that is local to the GPU, which is the one that uh, is going to be used by this accelerator to process the image. So now we basically need to tell the, uh, from the application that we want this read operation to have an output uh, that points to a Caladan memory object that is located in uh, another node. And we want to tell the sharpen operation that the, uh, its input uh, data uh, is located in this uh, buffer that happens to be local to the device, to the GPU. And since uh, remember that each of these operations goes through the uh, adapter logic that is part of the Caladan kernel, when 
the read request uh, reaches uh, Caladan, the, the adapter is going to translate it into uh, using some temporary uh, buffer that is local to the SSD uh, with, uh, with its uh, memory address. And then uh, once the SSD operation finishes, Caladan is going to forward this data and copy it into the actual target buffer using RDMA, uh, an RDMA memory copy. Once the copy is done, then it will trigger the continuation. And again, the adapter will translate the sharpened request so that the input field of this request will point to the local address of this uh, memory object. And uh, finally, uh, for resource addressing uh, and translation, each of these uh, kernel objects uh, are basically abstracting uh, all of these details uh, inside of the Caladan kernel, so applications do not uh, need to deal with uh, uh, translation or addressing. This is happening transparently to them uh, on, on the Caladan kernel. And each of these objects is in turn uh, exposed as uh, capabilities so that Caladan can offer distributed uh, authorization through capability uh, passing. So, uh, of course, the, these are the basics of uh, operating uh, a Caladan system, but there's many other uh, things that we have to take into consideration when uh, uh, implementing uh, Caladan, which uh, I, will not have to, uh, I will not have time to talk about. But this can go from how to have uh, adapters with uh, minimal complexity, how to have uh, scalable uh, capability management, or even down to having a dynamic memory management so that applications don't need to decide where buffers are going to be uh, placed. So uh, to conclude, Caladan offers a universal uh, resource fabric that, uh, can, uh, that offers uh, arbitrary distributed uh, request processing graphs, which can be used to express uh, com uh, complex uh, control planes like uh, data flow and uh, doing so more efficiently, so that we are going to reduce uh, data transfers and service latency. And also it does so through a unified uh, transport uh, mechanism and representation of both uh, services uh, and devices in the system in a way that is backwards compatible with existing devices and drivers. And finally, we do so without having any CPUs in the critical path and instead using SmartNIC so that these uh, costly CPUs can be used for application business logic. So uh, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. So thank, thank you, Luis. <clears throat> so are there any, are there any questions? Uh, please uh, raise your hand. Let me just see if... Uh... So I have I have a question while people are uh, are thinking. So in terms of the the smart NICs, uh, mm -hmm. clearly you know these are also some 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 type of processor, right? So um, in some sense, it still requires putting uh, you know some amount of, of processing capability there. Do you have a feeling for? In terms of energy, what is the footprint that you need? Because I'm assuming you need much, much less to, to implement this functionality than you would. Uh, you know, it doesn't actually require a full CPU. So, do you have a feeling for the energy? Yeah, uh, so we do not have numbers in energy, but for example, if we look at many uh, smart NICs that are already uh, commercially available, uh, they offer. Uh, low power uh, cores like uh, for example using the ARM architecture so the idea is that even though they are going to be low frequency and more energy efficient cores they are just uh, sufficient to implement these very simple uh, operations and that is, is is part of the game here with Caladan is designing some operations that are simple enough that we can express our goals uh, efficiently without requiring too much hardware and then as part of the uh, future work we are also thinking about what additional hardware logic could be added in these smart NICs to make this even more efficient. I see, I see. And I guess it's also a question of stability, right? Where you probably it sounds like these operations will once you, you figure out the you know the basics, it will not change fundamentally. So you can actually really rely on, on kind of specialized hardware to do this for you. Exactly, exactly. So so there is one more question uh, on Slack uh, from mm -hmm. Cross Discafes. 
I might have missed it, but do the smart NICs you are using have general purpose ARM cores uh, or programmable hardware? Uh, if they are ARM based SNICs, why not simply have a separate low cost ARM CPU and run Kaladan on that? That's a really good question. So uh, the idea is that the, the, these smart NICs are going to have, uh, for example, we can look at commercially available Bluefield uh, smart NICs, which do have indeed uh, programmable uh, ARM cores inside. But the idea is that they are uh, uh, physically uh, isolated from the rest of the system so that we can uh, very securely offload all the critical parts of the kernel in this smart NIC that is totally dissociated from the rest of the of the node. So in the sense that basically we are going to be able to very uh, securely isolate this uh, trusted uh, computing base, which is the Caliban kernel from the rest of the system. So even if you have a security breach on the system, you are not sharing an operating system that is both going to be executing your application and executing the very critical Caliban kernel. Okay, so I think that we'll have to stop there, but uh, you will find Luis on uh, on, SP, on the SPMA uh, channel, right? And uh, the talk will be online, so you can.